Hi everyone, welcome back to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about how to better organize some of our email within our Gmail inbox that we created from last tutorial, a couple of tutorials back when we created the Google inbox. Now a few things is that what we're going to go through works for any Google account, regardless if it's the standard at gmail.com account or maybe if it's part of a business that has Google for work or Google for education. Now certain things such as the labels component may not work for other email clients. So just be aware that most of this is only applicable for that of the Google email client. So with that, I've already logged into this particular account. This is one of our testing and training accounts which is this TNS user 01. And what I wanted to show is just a few tips and tricks of how to organize your email better. So the first thing I want to point out is that there are tabs that are turned on by default with primary social promotions, updates, and forums. You cannot change or add your own customized tabs. These tabs are preset by Google and these particular tabs are able to organize your incoming mail into different sections based on the content within those emails. As you continue to use your email, Google will get better at placing where it thinks the incoming emails are supposed to go, as well as you have some additional control where you can choose to manually bring important emails out of the subsequent tabs and place them in the primary tab. The one that when you log in, that's the tab you will see first. So just to give you some ideas of what goes into each of these tabs, the primary tab is going to have the person to person conversations. So the ones where they email you directly or you email them directly and it is a person, it's not identified as a mailing list or a newsletter, they're direct conversations. The social tab is where we get the YouTube updates, the Facebook updates, Twitter updates, LinkedIn, all that goes into the social tab. So you can take a look at that whenever you have time. Same thing with the promotions. This is where you may get deals, offers. I believe there are some already in here where you have things like Best Buy and Staples. So if you do have any of those email subscriptions, they come here. There is also some ads that actually come in. These are web clips and these you can uh, click on them and then they take you to other places. They only appear in promotions, so it's a little hit and miss. Then we get updates. Updates, these are updates to things like if you create a Google event in Google Calendar and people are confirming or not confirming, you would get those updates here. Uh, other things is if you get your uh, phone bill statements or credit card statements emailed to you, those will also come to this location as well. And then forums, any message forums, discussion boards, uh, this is where you're also on some mailing lists. They all come to the forum section. And once again, it's something that you can choose to check when you have time. That's really the goal of having these different tabs is that everything primary should be what's important. And then anything that is in subsequent tabs are ones that you don't necessarily need to get to right away. Now, if there was something that was moved into a secondary tab, the social promotions, updates, or forms, you can pull those to the primary by simply right clicking on that particular email. And then it can say move to what tab, and then you can move it to the one that you think is more correct or appropriate for it. And then Google will remember that for subsequent emails. If you don't like these tabs, or if there's only some tabs that you want to have visible, then you can turn off tabs by going to in the settings gear and then to configure inbox. With configure inbox, you can choose which ones you want to uncheck. And furthermore, if you uncheck everything, you get to the more standardized email view where everything is just on a single list and that's what you see all new incoming emails go to the very top and that's that's that so really the tabs they 
are there to organize. Some people like it, some people don't. It's really up to you if you use them or not. And that's just one of the methods that Google has implemented to try to help you keep a smaller inbox so that you don't have hundreds or thousands of emails just staying in your inbox. Labels are very similar to that of the folders in Outlook. So they appear in this left sidebar and I'm just going to momentarily turn off the Hangouts. So they appear in this left sidebar and there's a gray line that separates the labels that are above and the labels that are hidden under this more section. When you click on the more section, all of them expand out. This is also where I have the option to create new labels and manage labels. If I go ahead and create new labels, I can create a sample label. And I do have the option to nest it under labels if I already have a pre-existing label. So here I create sample label one. It will then appear in my label list. And then I can go ahead and create a second sample sample label and this one I named nested label because I want to nest this label under sample label one I hit create so you'll notice that that one did not appear but there is a small triangle that appeared beside sample label one this is used for me to expand so I can see the sub labels so if you create nested labels and you don't see them appear gotta hit that small side triangle in order to make it appear so from there, we have our labels. I do want to point out that dragging your mail to your desired labels works exactly the same as it does in other email clients. And then if I go to that label, I will see that particular email. But the one thing that is different is that I'm not stuck with the one label. So here there's sample label one. If I also wanted to put the nested label in, I have a few options. The easiest is if I'm in the email itself, I can click and drag the second label onto the email. And now there's two labels associated with the one email. So this is different from other email clients where if you placed it in one folder location, it was only in that one folder. You couldn't place it in more than one location. Now I can find this particular email in sample label one or in nested label. So depending on how I organize and categorize my labels, I may need to find emails in multiple locations. And here I go, they are in multiple locations. So this does change the way that I can use my labeling system. For example, if I did have in a business environment, PR, HR, and finances for three different projects, well, each project would then need PR, HR, and finances. So then I would have the folder for project one, PR, HR, finances, project two, PR, HR, finances, and then project three, PR, HR, and finances. And that would give me a total of 12 labels. Where now, if I know that I can put multiple labels on, then I just need one set of PR, HR, and finances, and then another set of the project one, project two, project three, totaling six, halving the amount of labels that I'm actually using in my label sidebar, and then reducing the I need to have so many different uh, labels and sub labels and have them being very descriptive. It could be simple, just project one is one label, and then finances is another label keeping things quite simple. So that was just a couple examples of how I could use this multiple labels. I just want to show a little bit more about adding and removing labels. So if I wanted to remove these labels, the simplest is for me to just click the X right beside the labels, and then that will get rid of those labels. If I remove both labels like I did, the place that I can find that particular email, since it is no longer in the inbox, is under the more labels, all emails live in all mail. So I can go to all mail, I can find that one email, see it's not in the inbox, and it has no other labels associated with it. So I can go to all mail, click on it, and then be able to relabel it as needed. A few things we did talk about moving 
in the one email into the proper label. Another shortcut is that you can drag the labels from the label sidebar to the email itself. And that could be another way of adding your labels. And then finally, if I have an email checked off or if I am in an email, then there is this labels button where I can click and then I can actually check off the labels that I want. Apply. And there I go. So different ways to add the labels on and those labels help for us to be able to find our emails as required. Some additional features with labels is that we can color our labels. If you go ahead and hover your mouse over a label on the sidebar, there's a small drop down menu which allows you to choose the label color. So important labels, you may want to consider having it red. And then because there is nested labels in this example, it will ask, do I want it on just the very root or highest label or do I want all it and all sub labels? I'm just going to do it on the one. So then we can see that now there's this red square where the drop down menu would be for the label, but it indicates that now this label is red with white. So it's much more noticeable on my screen. So choosing label colors, I can then color code and be able to then have specific colors or different labels in my label list. Very easy to see what category or classification I choose for these labels. Also, there's a few additional options the in label list show show if unread or hide. This determines whether or not I will see the label in the sidebar above or below this more labels. So if I go ahead and click hide, I'm no longer going to see the sample label one and its nested labels until I click the more labels and then I'll see it at the bottom of that section. So that is being able to choose whether or not to show or hide that particular label from the label list on this left sidebar. Another option that I have is that in the message list, I can choose to show or hide. So if I hide this from the message list, if I go to all mail, it will not show that particular label. This could be because of the fact that if you have multiple labels, it does start getting very long so that you lose out on either the subject line the first few words of the email or both. So having the option to hide them from the message list can be beneficial so that you can see more of the subject and email itself at a glance. Final things is that there is edit if I want to rename or make changes to its location as a sublabel, and then I can remove the label. This does not delete the emails, it just removes and deletes the label. Then if I add a sublabel from here, then it fills in what the nested label section should be. Finally, the last thing about labels that I want to mention is that the manage labels link will take us to the labels tab in our settings. Here you can also choose if some of the system labels like the important or all mail or trash should be shown or hidden under the more label. So I like seeing my all mail and my trash. So I tend to keep those above so that it's easier for me to quickly go there. Furthermore, there are the categories, which are the tabs previously mentioned, and then the user created labels. And once again, show and label list, show and message list, and remove and edit those particular labels. Now you may note that in the label list, I still currently cannot actually select more than one label and say, I just want all the emails with sample label one and nested label in it. So in the example before, I want to find emails from project two that are finances. Well, I can't do that right now by just clicking on the sidebar. So when we come back in another video, we'll show and demonstrate how we can apply searches that we can find multiple labels associated with a single email. So till then, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Until next time, thanks for watching.